I'm Grady Levins, and we are so ready for our lesson. Yuval's here, and we are doing mathematics grade 11. What are we going to be chatting about today? Thanks, Indiana. We're going to be doing completing the square. So grade 10s, this is not really for you, matrix. You need to stay tuned. Grade 11s, this is a special one for you that's completing the square. Yeah, so grade 10s, enjoy your break. You get your time next year in matric to work hard. But now, grade 11s, let's get to it, and we'll see you right after the break. Hi guys, Grade 11 Mindsetters, welcome back. I hope you're chatting to us on the Facebook page and you're ready for an awesome, awesome lesson. Just in case you don't know what the links are, you can visit us on your PC or even on your mobile phone. I know all of you guys use Facebook on your phone. This is the one and only chance that you can actually use Facebook and say that you are actually learning. Um, we are on facebook.com forward slash learn extra and that's with an X, learn XTRA. Also on Twitter, I know a whole bunch of you have been adding us today, and um, that is at Learn Extra. We're about to talk to you, Val, and he's going to take us through today's lesson. But guys, just remember, send us all your questions, and we'll try and answer all of them. If we don't, we use our page as a 48-hour help desk. So if you give us a bit of time, we've got a team of dedicated teachers that try and answer all of your questions and help you as much as we can. And I think now we should get straight to grade 11. Yuval, take it away. Thanks, Indiana. Okay, so I mean, you all know about the quadratic function because you learnt about it in grade 10. We all should remember the standard form of the quadratic function, and that is where we start our lesson on completing the square. Okay, so y equals ax squared. Let's see if we can fix our pen there. Right, here we go. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is, of course, the standard form. Okay? And you should all be familiar with that. That is the standard form for a quadratic. It's got this a, b, and a c. It's known as a quadratic. Some of you may know it as a trinomial. Okay? But hopefully we have all seen this before by this stage of the game. Okay? Now we're going to introduce you to a new form of this equation. And that form goes y equals a, okay, the a is the same a as this a up here, but that's where the similarity ends. x minus p all squared plus q. Now you may see this with a b and a c, you may see it with a p and a t, the letters are irrelevant, the point is that this is called the standard form, and we refer to this as the turning point form, okay, the turning point form, turning point form. Now, um, completing the square helps us go from the standard form to the turning point form, okay? So A, it gives you the turning point, but it also helps us to solve a value of the equation. We'll come back to that a little bit later on, okay? Let's have a look here and see now what exactly am I talking about, okay? Remember, um, one important thing before we do a numerical example is that if you then take this turning point form, You'll notice you have this squared bracket here. If you foil that bracket out, you multiply this A, and you distribute it into that bracket, you add your Q, you are going to eventually come back to this. So in actual fact, although they look different, they have the same numerical value. So they are the same. They just give us different bits of information. Okay? In other words, 5 times 2 is 10. 5 plus 5 is 10. Okay? I write them for different reasons. Maybe I want to show you that the 1 is a multiple of 5. Maybe I want to write the number 10 in terms of its multiples. Okay? When, I want to write, when I want to write a quadratic equation in terms of its turning point, I then use this down here. Okay? Let's go back to our pen. Let's go back to our thin pen. Right, so a numerical example. y equals x squared plus 4x plus 5. That's a plus over there, 4x plus 5. Okay? I'm going to do an example with you and then we're going to summarize in general the steps for completing the square. Because completing the square is one of those sections where students may have this kind of fear of it, okay? Especially those that have done it. Because it's perceived as a slightly more tricky section, but in actual fact, it's got a very straightforward process, almost like baking a cake. You do the same thing every time and you'll get your result every time. It's a nice, easy way of doing it. Okay? So the first thing I do is I notice what my A is, 
what my B is and what my C is. I've written them down there. I hope you're all able to identify those coefficients. And that's in terms of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? I am, of course, referring to these numbers. a is 1. It's a number in front of the x squared. b is 4. It's a number in front of the x. And c is 5. Okay? We then do the special trick for completing the square where we take this b term. Okay? We take this b term. What do we do with it? We multiply it by a half. So this is a kind of rough notes here. This is, you, this is what you do kind of on the page, but you do this on the side. Okay? You take your b term, and your b in this case is 4. You then multiply it by a half. Okay? So you end up with, let's just erase that, you then end up with 4 times a half, 4 times a half, or you divide it by 2, it's the same thing, and you end up with 2. Okay? And you then square the result there. So you go 2 squared, and you end up with a 4. Okay? Now this 4 is the magic number in completing the square. Okay? It's, quite, it's got the word completing in it. Okay? That's not a made up word. It's called completing because this is the number that we add to this expression, y, in order to complete the square. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay? So this over here is the magic number. 2 squared equals 4. Let's actually use a green. We've used the yellow before. Okay? Now, what do we do with that magic number? Okay? We take what we have as our expression, as y equals ax squared plus 4x plus 5. y equals ax squared, which is just x squared, plus 4x. Now what I do is this constant term, I leave a space here and I write it in a little bit further on. Okay? I then take this magic number and I add it first and I then subtract it. Okay? So it's as if that number was never there. So I'm not, in effect, changing the value of this trinomial because if you think about it, plus 4 minus 4 cancels to 0, but I'm adding a term. Why am I adding a term? So that I can complete the square. Okay? Let's give the definition some meaning. And what does it mean to complete the square? Look what I have here. This will always be the case if you then add first and then subtract that squared equals 4, you will always end up with a perfect square. And it's these three numbers over here, or rather the first three terms in your expression, which will always give you a perfect square. Always. Unless you've made a mistake. The mistakes you can possibly make, maybe you didn't divide by the 2 and square it properly. If you've done it correctly, these three numbers you'll be able to write as a perfect square. So I know now that I can do this squared, okay? And if you look at this trinomial, I hope you're all noticing that this is a nice, easy trinomial to factorize, even the grade 10s out there. Because why? It's a perfect square. Factors of 4, so I've got x and x. Factors of 4, it's going to be plus 2. And if you do this the quick way, okay? If you square this out in your head to make sure that it reaches what's above it, you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 2x is plus 4x plus 4. Okay? So this and this are equal. I still have my two terms down here. So I have a plus 5 and a minus 4. We call those the constant terms. Plus 5 minus 4, what does that give me? It gives me a 1. Okay? So I end up with a plus 1 here. And I have a y equals. And in actual fact, this is now, I refer to it as the turning point form you may, you may get taught it, or you may see it in textbooks also, as the completed square form. In other words, I'm able to look at this trinomial. If I foil this trinomial out, and I add all my terms again, I will get back to my original trinomial. So I have not changed this over here, this x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay? I haven't changed the value. What I've done is I've rewritten it. Why? so that I'm able to look at it and in one shot I can immediately see what my turning point is. My turning point is minus 2 because the turning point form always has a minus. So minus p which means 2 is equal to minus p so p is equal to minus 2 and this over here is a plus so that q is equal to a 1. Okay? And we're going to come back to that p and q. We'll see if we have time but the most important thing that I've done now is I've shown you 
how do we take an expression and how do we use um, certain techniques to convert that expression from a standard point or rather a standard function or a form to this very fancy turning point form. Yuval, yeah. can I ask a question? Yeah. Anelia wants to know why are we dividing by two? Why are we dividing by two? Okay, so okay, so this over here it divides by two because I'm sure that's what you're asking about, Anelia. This two over here, we divide by two because okay, it's quite complicated to explain, but basically, whenever you have a squared bracket, okay. First of all, I want you to learn it by heart. So I need you to take it as for granted that you're always going to divide by 2. Why? Because that's the method. That's what the recipe book says. Okay? So you have to do it. Okay? The reason why you do it is because we are trying to find this term that completes the square. And whenever you have an x plus, let's call it a y squared, okay? when you square it, you will always end up with x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And it's because of this 2xy that you're dividing by 2, okay, because over here you're timesing by 2 and we're working backwards. We're saying what term do you need there? It's because of this 2 over here that you have to have that expression. Okay, you have to divide by 2. That's about the best I can explain to you. What you need to do is you need to take numerical examples and you need to actually multiply them out. So for example, if you take this x plus 2 and you multiply it out, you will end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4. If you didn't divide it by 2, if you just took your 4 and you squared it, you'd end up with a 16 here. And you'd end up with a plus 16 minus 16. And then you would end up with a situation where you cannot factorize it into one perfect square. It's called completing the square. It's not called factorizing a trinomial. In order to complete the square, we have to divide that B term by 2. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, good answer. Okay, so, sure, that's a, good, a really good question, Anneli. I can see that you're a real thinker, hey? Mm. Okay, so now, I mean, I think we're ready to up the game a little bit. So, so we've got this scenario here. What happens now when we, let's extend our page, what happens when we now have a slightly more complicated trinomial? In other words, I now stick a coefficient to my x squared. Okay, so remember my standard form goes y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I've done an equation before where this a was 1. Okay, and I said to you there's a recipe to doing these, um, completing the squares. Okay, part of that recipe is how to handle this a, this coefficient of your x squared. Okay, and you don't have to worry about it when a is 1. Okay, but when A is not 1, you do have to worry about it. So as an example, I'm going to use 2x squared plus 6x. Y equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. Minus 7. Okay, and the first thing we do, and I think what I'll do now, is I'll write down a step in color so that we can all follow. The first thing we do, step 1, Step one is we get a coefficient, excuse me, we pull out the common term of A. So pull A out as a common factor. That's step one. How does this work? Okay. I'm going to pull a two out. So I end up with Y equals, when I say pull out, I actually mean factorized using common term. So I'm going to pull a two out like that. I put a bracket. x squared, y, because 2 times x squared, that works. I need a plus 3x here. So when I distribute, remember, you don't want to change the value. Every step you write down, that equal sign is a very powerful thing in maths. If you're saying that this equals this, they better be equal, otherwise you're going to lose your marks. In other words, when I multiply here, I end up with exactly what I have above. 2x squared plus 6x. How do I pull out a 2 from 7? Well, the answer is I don't. I just write it like that. Because it doesn't factorize nicely into 7. But when, my, when I distribute this 2, this 2 and this 2 will cancel. So I kind of cheat the system. Okay? And what have I now created? I've now created a trinomial 
where the A value, the new A value is now 1. There's now 1 in front there. And I then do exactly what I did earlier. Okay? So step 2, step 2 now, step 2 is take B, take B term, B term, then half B, and then square your result. Half B, all squared. Okay? Step 2, let's do that now. Here we go. My B term in this case is, of course, 3. What do I do with a 3? I multiply it by half. So I'm going to say 3 becomes 3 times a half, and I do this on rough, which is 3 over 2. Okay? I then multiply it, or rather square it, multiply it by itself, and that becomes 9 over 4, which, of course, is my magic number from before. Okay? I said to you, what do you do with that magic number? Why is it a magic number? Because that is the number that we use to complete the square. The, tri the tricky thing here is that you need to make sure that your brackets are right. Okay? So there's a bit of a challenge. You need to practice to get this right. I'm going to show you how it's done. People seem to struggle with brackets. Okay? But it's quite important because if you get your brackets right, I guarantee you you're going to get the answer right. How do the brackets work? I've got y equals, remember I pulled out a 2, I still need this big bracket here. And that bracket there is this bracket here. Okay? What do I have inside there? I've got x squared plus 3x, right, minus 7 over 2, which I leave a space and I write my minus 7 over 2. Okay? And I then add my completing the square. And let's actually call this step 3. Step 3. So that is the point where I now plus and minus my term. In other words, I plus and minus my magic term or my completed square term. So let's put it in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it in white and then we'll highlight it in yellow. So I'm going to say plus 9 over 4 and of course minus 9 over 4. Why do we plus and minus? Because I'm not allowed to just change the numeric value of this function. Okay? Where's my yellow? Magic term, right there. So because I have a plus and a minus, they cancel each other out. It's, it's as if it's like a ghost term. Yavol? Yes. Um, my Boca wants yes. to know, or I'll just call it diamonds. It's easier to say diamonds. How do you know if this is a B term, C term, or A term? Okay. Is that a good question? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> question. Is, is, it, is it diamonds? They say diamonds. Diamonds, that's a... That's a yeah, uh, or, or maboka. Maboka, okay, maboka. Maboka, so it's a good question, okay? But in grade 11, you should by now be able to identify when you are looking at, at a trinomial, okay? And one of the most important things in a trinomial is that you have that A, B, and C, okay? A is always going to be your coefficient of your x squared term. So if I go back to the standard form over here, A is always the number, the numerical number in front of the x squared. B is the numerical number in front of the x. And C is that number that doesn't have any x's next to it. Okay, so even now, down here, okay, once I've written in my brackets, all the way at the bottom, and effectively I've created a new trinomial in here, Okay, this trinomial has now a new A and a new B. The new A is now 1, the new B is 3, and the new C is 7 over 2, and that is the B term. So this one here, let's put an arrow so you can see it, is this B term here. It's the term next to the X. Hmm. Awesome. Okay. okay, and I've got another one from Palesa. Palesa. Palesa, Palesa wants to know, uh, was it necessary for us to write plus 4, minus 4. I think I saw it a bit, if you go up a bit, I think it's what she's talking about. Yeah. Yeah, there, I think. Yeah. Pal Palesa, I would say yes, it absolutely is necessary, okay? Um, a lot of this stuff is about seeing what to do next, okay? I always teach people to do the best they can to give themselves the best possible chance to get the question right, okay? 
If you're one of those people that can do this whole question and leave out steps, for example, okay, then I would say good luck to you. But, okay, even me, if I was writing a grade 11 exam today, I would write that out for myself. Why? Because it gives me that visual trigger. It lets me see that now, okay, I've got a perfect square over here. If you don't, if you don't write that in, okay, this x squared plus 4x plus 4, if you don't write that 4 in there, I'm a little bit worried that you, you won't see that those first three terms are a perfect square. Okay? And in actual fact, always, it's a rule that always this term that goes inside your perfect square bracket here, this x plus something, it's always going to be that term that you've divided by 2, this one here in the, in the square. So if you get 4 divided by 2 is 2, you're going to get a plus 2 in there. And that always works. So in actual fact, that even makes things a little bit easier. But yes, I would say, especially if you happen to make a stupid mistake, we all do it. You make a minus where it should have been a plus. You don't want to lose your marks because you didn't show you're working out for your teacher, but for you, more importantly, you want to give yourself the best possible chance to see what to do next. Okay. It's about you. It's not about what your teacher wants. It's about you. And then I've got another one from Anele. Okay. She wants to know, um, will it go wrong if we leave the 7 out of, what, 7 out of the brackets because it has got no yes. common factor? Yes. So it will go wrong. Okay. Well, there, well, there you go, Anele. It will definitely go wrong. Perfect. And I think that's all of the questions, guys. If you do have any more questions, but I think Yuval's going to move on to the next question. Okay, well, I just want to finish this question. Okay. We're very close. Okay. So if we have time, I'll just quickly finish this last question. Okay? Perfect. But your questions are great, so keep them coming. Okay, so just to end this, okay? Because we are so close. So exactly like we were saying to this caller now, these three terms, they now produce this perfect square. And here's where your brackets really play an important role. Okay? You need two brackets at this stage because you already have these brackets. So you've got a y equals to 2 and you've got this bracket. But now those three terms, they become a perfect square. Okay? And what goes in here, I've said to you already, is always going to be this b term that you divide by 2. So here's your b term. You divide it by 2. So 3 over 2 is what's going to go in there. And because I have a plus, because my b term was a plus, there's an invisible plus there, it's going to be x plus 3 over 2. Okay? And that you can do without thinking too hard about it. But if you do think about it, and you've written down this 9 over 4, you'll notice that 3 over 2 squared will give you your 9 over 4. It all ties back to your, to your result. What am I left with? I'm left with this minus 9 over 4, minus 7 over 2, okay? It doesn't look like I've got a calculator open here. So, okay, minus 9 over 4. Let's quickly do this like this. Minus 9 over 4. I'm going to change this to a minus 14 over 4. And I end up with minus 23 over 4. When you're asking me about that bracket, well, here's the reason why that 7 needs to be in the bracket. Because on my very last step, just before I finish this question, I'm going to have to distribute that 2... So minus 23 over 4. The last thing I need to do here is to distribute this two into all the terms. Let's use this into each of the terms in here. So there, and then it needs to go all the way here to that. If you didn't put that 7, you're not going to distribute that 2, and then you're going to get the final wrong answer. So last line here, distributing the 2, I end up with 2 x plus 3 over 2 all squared and then 2 times minus 23 over 4 is just minus 23 over 2. Our turning point is minus 3 over 2 and negative 23 over 2. Fantastic. Are, are we ready to go to a break now, Yuval? I uh, absolutely think so. Fantastic. Let's give you a little bit of a break. You can have a little bit of water. And the same goes to you guys. Quickly jump up, stretch those legs. I think I might even do it in the break. Um, and most importantly, do not leave your couches because we'll be back in two seconds. See you then. Hi, Grade 11s, and welcome back. Hope you're all learning lots and lots. 
Don't forget to chat to me on the page. I'm here. I'm listening. Lebza, you rock girl. I know that you are one mindset to watch out for. Always on the page in grade 10. No, in grade 12, but watch in grade 10, 11, and 12. You are going to rock it when it comes to matric exams. Um, okay, guys, just in case you didn't know, I'm going to repeat them one more time. Follow me at Learn Extra on Twitter, also www.facebook.com forward slash Learn Extra. I know I sound like a bit of a, you know, saying the same things over and over and over again. But guys, let's get chatting. Yuval, take it away. Okay, thanks. So, I mean, I've given you an introduction here to this completing the square business. And I've hinted to you that, and maybe you've seen it already in class, because some of the messages that we're getting through is really about using completing the square to solve equations. Some of you may think that you've seen this in a slightly different way. Remember, it's the same kind of question. As part of your syllabus, you are required to know how to go from the one form to the other, but you're also required to know how to use this new tool, this new recipe that you've got here. How do you use that to solve an equation? Okay? So I think what we'll do is we are going to keep the same numerical, the same number, or at least the same function as we had over here. This y equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. Okay? y equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. y equals 2... Okay, let's start that one more time. 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. Okay? Now, I'm changing the question here. So I'm not telling you to please put this in turning point form. I'm telling you to please, I'll even write the word please, solve for y equals 0. In other words, or f of x equals 0. You may see this called f of x. Or the question might say, find the roots of the equation or the roots of the function. In other words, I want the solution. Okay? And that means that we are going to say, and, and also, okay, because you can use the quadratic formula, I would say here, by completing the square. Okay, so normally, and this is quite important for all the matrix and the grade 11s, okay, if they want you to complete the square, they will tell you normally to complete the square. Why? Because there are other methods for solving a trinomial, like the quadratic formula or factorization. You don't have to complete the square. You should only complete the square when the question explicitly says so. Okay? So I'm going to now say, all right, I have to use completing the square. I want full marks for this question, so I now have to find y equals 0. Okay? But I've already done the completing the square portion for this question. And what I ended up with from above was this result here. This 2x plus 3 over 2 all squared. Okay? So I've got 2. Let's try that one more time. 2x plus 3 over 2 all squared. And then what else did I have? I had minus 23 over 2. Minus 23 over 2. So remember, this could be quite a lot of marks. So what you would have to do first, before you even get to this point where you say equals 0, you would have to do all of the above. So you would have to create all this over here. You would have to do this, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, and eventually you would end up with this completed square form. You then take that completed square form and you set it equal to zero. Okay? And from here, we can now solve for x. How do we do that? We solve a normal equation. So we bring this 23 over 2 to the other side. Okay? The impulsive reaction you might have to my question when I say, how do we solve this? Please don't say that you foil this thing out. Because what's going to happen when you foil it out? You are going to end up back with where you originally started. Okay? I've seen this many times. So you get there and you think, great, I'm going to solve. Foil the whole thing out, you're going to end up back there. In other words, going backwards. The way to do this rather is to bring this 23 over 2 across. So this will always work. I'm going to show you this example. It will always work. Okay? We take this 23 over 2 and we bring it, and it won't always be 23 over 2. It won't always be a minus. It might be whatever it might be, right? Okay? But we bring it across, 
And then we end up with 2, x plus 3 over 2, all squared, and that now is equal to 23 over 2. Okay? Now, sometimes you may get a positive number here. A positive number. Okay? And when you bring it across, you'll end up with a negative 23 over 2. We'll come back to that in a second. The next thing that I do, I now want to get this bracket on its own. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I'll write that here in, well, let's write it in white, and then we'll highlight it. So I'm going to divide this side by 2, and I'm going to divide this side by 2, because whatever we do to one side, we of course do to the other. There's my division by 2 and my division by 2. And I hope you can all see that when I divide by 2, this cancels, and I'm left just with my squared bracket. But on this side, when I divide by 2, I end up with 23 over 4. And if you're not convinced of that, you can work that out. Okay? The next step is to square root both sides. Why? Because I'm trying to get x on its own. So the trick is, you've got a whole bracket squared, square root the whole left-hand side, and square root the whole right-hand side. So, we square root here, and we square root here. And again, that's a, that's a thing that we apply to both sides. And what happens when you square root both sides in maths? You must always take a plus minus your answer. So what I end up with here is the squared bracket is no longer because it's been cancelled by my square root sign. But 23 over 4 is plus minus 23 over 4. Okay? And that is a rule. Whenever you square root both sides, if you have x squared is equal to 1, if you square root both sides, you're going to get x is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay? If you don't want to do it by square rooting both sides, you can do it the old-fashioned way by completing the square. So you're going to say x squared minus 1 equals 0, x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0, and you will still end up with x equals 1, or x equals minus 1. So just to show you that I know what I'm talking about. You, whenever you square root both sides, you have to take the plus minus into account. If you don't, you're going to lose an answer. And you're going to lose a mark. I'm almost done here. The last thing that I need to do is just to bring this, this 3 over 2, across to the right hand side. In, in other words, get x on its own. So I have this 23 over 4. And then I have this plus 3 over 2. What does it become? It becomes minus 3 over 2. Minus 3 over 2. What you might notice, some of you I hope have noticed, that when you take a square root of a fraction, you square root the top and you square root the bottom. So the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom, the square root of 4 is of course 2. So I have minus 3 over 2. And some of you, if you write into your calculators or you try and evaluate that and you put it over the same denominator, then you can simplify it slightly and you'll end up with plus minus root 23 minus 3. And that is all over 2 and that is the final answer. If the question then says to one or two decimal places, you can then convert that to decimals using your calculator Otherwise, you are done. Okay. Guys, I think we're going to take a quick break. To Melo, you just asked me, why don't we start with grade 12 or 4? We can't do that because we've got grade 10 that starts at 4. Don't forget, grade 12s, you're on at 6 p.m. Anyway, guys, loving all the questions, loving all the interactions. There's some amazing new people on the page. Babazile, welcome. Welcome all the new mindsetters. What we're going to do now is we're going to get to, we're going to take a break and we'll be back in two seconds. See you then. Bye. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Grade 11 mindsetters and maybe even 12. Who knows? 
Guys, there's, there are quite a few questions on the page, and if we had to answer them all, we would have to repeat the question. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do another question, which is similar to the one we've just done, and work from it beginning to end with Yuval again. So what I think you should do is get out those pens and papers, we'll try and take it slowly and explain it as we go along. Um, yeah, any questions and you're still stuck, let us know on the page. Just remember we're a 48 hour help desk, so you've got to give us a little bit of time to kind of work through all the questions and, and get those answers to you. Um, don't forget facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Also chat to us on Twitter at learn extra. We're here to chat to you. Um, last 20 minutes of the lesson, so let's get cracking. Hey? Alrighty, so just another example to kind of run the point home to make sure that you've all understood. I've got one where we still have a coefficient, let's try that again, we still have a coefficient in front of our a, or rather our a is not 1, in front of our x squared, and the, the number that I've chosen is minus 4x plus 5, okay, and we are going to solve this by completing the square, okay, so solve for x if y equals 0, in other words I want the solutions to this equation, and I want it by, I'm just going to write here CS, and that stands for completing the square. Okay? In other words, we have to complete the square. Okay? There's easier ways to do this, because there's a formulaic way. We have to complete the square if we want our marks. What do we do here? We pull the 3 out. So I have 3x squared minus 4 over 3. Okay? Why do I do that? Because when I multiply back, I'm going to say 0 equals because my y is 0. Now, when I multiply back to drill this point out of these over here, they need to match my original function. And you can see that by dividing where I can't pull a common factor out, it has the same result. So this 3 and this 3 will eventually cancel if I multiply back. And I'll be left with this minus 4x. And I'm going to do the same trick with this plus 5, which is now going to become plus 5 over 3. Okay? So I've done the first part, that's step one, where I've pulled out my common factor of A. The next step is then to use this term here, this 4 over 3, which in this case is a minus, okay? And to use that term and to do my division by 2, and then to square it in order to find that magic number which is going to complete my square, okay? So let's do that together. So I have my B term is equal to minus 4 thirds, okay? which I'm now going to say is minus 4 thirds times a half, which is minus um, 4 over 6. Minus 4 over 6, which I hope you can all see is actually minus 2 thirds. What happens when I square that? It becomes 4 over 9. And this is now my magic number. Okay? I'm going quite quickly. But that is now my magic number that I'm going to add and subtract in order to create that perfect square. So here we go. Okay? I now have extend this page. I now have 0 equals, this 3 is on the outside, I have x squared minus 4 over 3 x, I then leave a space and I write this plus 5 over 3 down here, okay? Then I'm going to take this 4 over 9 and I'm going to add it and I'm going to subtract it. So it's as if it was never there. Plus 4 over 9, okay? Minus 4 over 9, okay? And let's highlight that in yellow. And that is now my magic term. And I hope you can see that quite clearly. The next thing, okay, the next step is we now notice down here. That I've created this perfect square. 0 equals 3. Okay, these three terms here, like we've said earlier. Okay, they are going to become this perfect square term. And it's going to be x, right? Now what did we say? We said you're always going to use that b term once you've divided it by 2, which is negative 2 thirds. And that will always work. And it's very easy to check that, okay? Be, why? Because you can say 2 over 3 squared is going to give you your 4 over 9. If you foil this thing out, you're going to get minus 2 thirds, minus 2 thirds, add your like terms, you're going to get this middle term over here, this 4 over 3x. I still have these two terms down here, which now, okay, I'm going to say minus 4 over 9, plus 5 over 3, okay, and what I notice is that I can create a common denominator there, but it's easier, of course, just to use calculators, 
Okay? I'm almost done here. What I can do now in actual fact, and you can do this earlier as well, because I have equals zero, I can divide by three on both sides and it doesn't matter when you do that. Divide by three, divide by three, okay? The reason why I do that is to get rid of this three, it's outside the bracket, and in actual fact it's not going to play any role in this going forward, it's actually going to cancel out completely. You can only do that when you are solving an equation. If you are converting standard form to completed square or turning point form, you cannot get rid of anything because you don't have a left hand side. You've got y equals. You do not have zero equals. It's an expression, not an equation. Okay? What am I left with when I divide is I've got x minus two thirds all squared. I have an equal zero over here, of course. Let's not leave that out. Okay, and what I notice here is I'm just going to do this the long way because this calculator is not working. I have 5 over 9. Okay, and what do I get? Uh, rather, that's 5 times 3 over 9. I think that's better. I've just created an LCD over there. In other words, times by 3 over 3. And let's see, 15 minus 4. That's going to give us 11 over 9. Okay, so we're almost through to the end of this question. That's going to give us 11 over 9. Right, so I have 0 equals x minus 2 over 3, all squared, and I'm going to get plus 11 over 9. Okay, I have now created the turning point form for this. I now go into that equation phase, and I solve the equation. Remember I showed you? Bring the constant term over to the other side, and then square root both sides. Okay, so let's do that together. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can extend this page. Okay, I think that this page is now extended to its full degree. But that's okay because we are almost done here. X minus 2 over 3, all squared. Okay, I'm just going to write it as if this 11 over 9 goes that side. And I end up with a minus 11 over 9. Minus 11 over 9. Okay, now if... This was not a negative. You could successfully square root both sides and you would get no problem. 11 over 9 is root 11 over 3. But, because I have a negative in there, when you try and plug this into your calculator, or if you think about the square root of a negative number, okay, you will realize that it actually can't be done. It's not real. In other words, you cannot continue here. In other words, there is no solution to this. Okay? You can't carry on. For the matrix, what does that mean? If you think about your quadratics, your parabolas, okay? A trinomial with no solution. Remember, the solution is the x-intercept. It means that that trinomial is one of those scenarios where it does not cross the x-axis. For the grade 11s, you have now created a situation where you have no solution to the equation. And the question might give you guidance in that. So here's where doing past papers and becoming familiar with the way questions are asked plays a real important role. It might say something like prove that there are no solutions or prove the solution doesn't exist. Hmm. It's interesting. I've got, I've got a, few, a few questions. Um, okay. Malumbe says, so is it the case that we are using trinomials when it is not possible to use the quadratic formula and when the question so demands, only are the trinomials and quadratic formula used interchangeably? Malube, I hope I got that right. Sure, okay, that was Malube, a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> Malube. Yes, Malube, Malube. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I think what you mean to say, rather than using quadratics or trinomials, I think what you mean to say is that we will only use completing the square, okay, when the question says so. And that I have to agree with you. Especially, okay, for the matrix, but also for the grade 11s, you do not need to use completing the square unless the question specifically says solve by completing the square. Okay? Or if the question says um, convert from standard form to turning point form. Okay? Then you would use completing the square. To solve a trinomial, there is definitely an easier way. And that way is the quadratic formula. By the way, how do we come up with this amazing thing called the quadratic formula? 
how we came about it by completing the square. Okay? But you're allowed to use the result without proving it. So the answer to your question is you don't have to do completing the square to solve a trinomial unless the question says so. Fantastic, guys. I hope that you've all had a fantastic lesson. And I know that there are a few questions on the page um, with regards to this question. So maybe what, I don't know, you tell me, Yuval, I'll also speak to John. Maybe what we can do is we can put on a similar question onto the Facebook page and grade 11s, so what we can do is maybe next week you work through it during the week. I'll make sure I post it tomorrow. You work through it and then next week we'll go through the answers and see if you're still stuck. And then you can tell me exactly where it's stuck. You know, it's, it's hard when there's so many learners saying, I'm stuck here, I'm stuck there. It's easier when we know exactly where you are stuck and we can help you more. Um, and also knowing that you've worked on the question a little bit more. Um, Yuval, thank you so much for a fantastic lesson. Grade 11s, you have been complete, you have been fantastic. Grade 12s, don't forget, we've got our live show coming on next and it's going to be a cracker of a one. Grade 11s, thank you so, so much. And don't forget, join us on Twitter, join us on Facebook. We're always here. Post your questions because we're not live. Doesn't mean we're not going to answer you. I'm literally on the computer all day listening to you guys. So have a fantastic day and see you next week. Bye.